You are listening to the All Metal Mode podcast with your host, Mike Hare. Join me and Gypsy Jules every Monday night and Matt Hoffman and myself every Tuesday night. Listen in as we discuss a wide range of metal detecting and related topics such as technical, equipment, talk to guests, and so much more. Sit back, join in on the drinking game. For those new to the show, every time I say Relic Machine, you need to do a shot. These are the rules. I didn't make them up. We hope you enjoy this episode of All Metal Mode. Hey everybody, this is Mike Hare, and you are listening to the All Metal Mode podcast. Of course, Monday nights we got Gypsy Jewels, and um, yeah, we got a, I'm really excited to uh, talk to Philip, oh I shoot, I didn't, I should have talked to him about pronouncing his last name, Philip, I hope I don't mess this up, but Gaver, Philip Gaver. Um, I'll be honest with you, I hadn't heard of him before, and uh, Gypsy uh, talked to him just today. We didn't have a guest, and I had a couple people back out, and uh, so I added him as a friend. I was looking at his Facebook and excited to have him on. Uh, very interesting fella. fella. So, uh, yep. so, speaking of that, we need guests. If you have an idea for a guest, if you'd like to be a guest, reach out to me. You can do it on Facebook, um, Mike Hare, obviously. You can email me at allmetalmode at gmail.com. Uh, you know, this is your show. Tell us who you want to listen to. Tell us who you want, want to have on, and if you can, help us get them. Uh, tell them about the podcast and see if they'd be interested. Have them reach out to me. I would so appreciate that. Uh, or they can reach out to Gypsy. Uh, it's gypsy jewels on facebook and i don't know her email but uh yeah uh before we begin 11 uh, november 2nd through november the 12th i will be in ohio i don't know if we'll be doing shows uh i'm thinking i will do uh november 5th and the reason is matt will probably be with me He's supposed to come up to Dayton. We're gonna we're gonna hunt all day, so I figured why well, I got him if he can stick around. Uh we'll just do a podcast together. And um yeah, so I doubt I'll be doing one the sixth or the twelfth. The the twelfth is a Monday. I'm supposed to be back that day, but I'm figuring I'll be pretty wore out from driving. So uh we're probably not going to uh to do one on the 12th, but we'll see what, we'll see what happens. And, uh, you know, you, you never know. We'll see, we'll see. But, uh, if not, I'll have some shows lined up, uh, some pre-recorded shows. Uh, and I, I'm thinking, I'm hoping to get one lined up, uh, like kind of do a mix of, of some of our shows from the past, some of the best, uh, parts of different shows and, and do that. Hey, Gypsy, how you doing? I'm doing wonderful, Mike. Thank you. Good deal. Good deal. Uh, you been out detecting at all? A little bit yesterday. Yesterday, it finally cleared off here in Texas. We've had so much rain lately. Yeah, we have. that cartoon, Michael bringing it all in. And yesterday was just gorgeous, perfect temperature and everything. So, um I had a friend visiting me that I hadn't seen in about 15 years, and uh, she came in, she lives in Kerrville, and uh, came in to visit, and the day before we went out and kind of did some surface fine hunting in an area along the river that I detect a lot, and uh, I found a cool token, um, surface find, and then yesterday I went out and got a little bit in, but just for about an hour or so, not enough, you know, no. me, I, I want to go all day. 
<laughs> right. Yeah, I don't blame you on that. I haven't, you? No, I haven't got out. I had, well, Steph's had to work more than even usual and stuff. And, you know, I got the kids. And so it's it's been tough um, to get out. I am, I'm just, you know, I'm really looking forward to my Ohio trip. I'm... I've been doing a lot of research and getting stuff gathered up for that. I'm hoping to get a lot of detecting in if my family will let me. Um, yeah, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. You know, and, and one good thing is, um, in the past, the county my mom lives at, uh, you, you couldn't you couldn't find the owners online. You had to go into the auditor to visit the auditor's office um, to see who oh. owned it. And which is very time consuming as you can imagine. And, uh, so they've finally have fixed that and it's all online now. So I've already got a couple, couple spots lined up really close. And, uh, so hopefully, you know, even if I can just get out a couple hours here and there, um, I'll be happy. I'm hoping to get out several times, but, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm excited. That'll be fun. Uh, I bet you're going to find some goodies. I hope. I'm a little worried about the weather. Um, I was supposed to be gone like this week, but Steph had to, uh, she had some stuff come up at work and she can't leave until the second. So I'm hoping it's, I I just like my nightmare. I actually had a nightmare the other night. It snowed the whole time I was in Ohio. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That is a nightmare. (laughs) Right. Right. You you know, you so uh hopefully we don't have any of that uh philip did i pronounce your last name correctly that's close enough close enough. <laughs> yeah all you have to remember is like you gave her something gave her, gave so. her. Gave her. that works that yeah works. my last name bought that name all my life <laughs> My last name's Hare, and it's H A E R, and and it's funny. Everybody, I, you know, you just get used to people pronouncing it wrong. It doesn't even bother me, but it's it's just Hare. I always say like like the hair on your head. So how would you like to have PG for your initials all your life? Parental guidance. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'd I'd have put that into a pickup line for the women when I was younger. <laughs> I'm not sure how, but I'd have found a way. <laughs> yeah that's funny it's been cruel but i survived it <laughs> that's, that's great looks like like chat's going really good everybody's getting in and uh well mercer he's got a 19 month old boy and a nine nine week old or nine week old girl yeah well you're busy for sure i can't imagine yeah. buddy it's tough getting out when you got these little ones I'm waiting for Randy to st- when he starts walking. Him and I, he's going detecting with me. We're getting All there. mine are grown up. <laughs> yeah, I used to drag mine out with me all the time, and now they're like, "You go have your fun, Mom. I'm I'm fine right here." <laughs> you know, they might get back into it. They're they're young now. They're they're I'm sure they're about yeah. the, you know living it up and having fun right now. Mm-hmm. They are. They are. You never know. They might. Yeah, they don't have no time for mom right now. No, mom's not important anymore. <laughs> <laughs> They'll come back around. Well, when <laughs> when, they when they grow up, <laughs> when they grow up, that means you got all that time to do what you want to do. You've done your job. True. True. Yeah, my youngest, he's fifteen, and. He started high school this year, so he said that a little ways, but um, I don't know. He doesn't like to go out with me as much metal detecting anymore. When I go out, he'd just rather be playing a video game, unfortunately. <laughs> they go through them phases. <laughs> they do. But um, speaking of metal detecting, um, so, uh, Philip, um, how long have you been metal detecting? Well, Gypsy, uh, I've been an off and on person. As like I've said, uh, I had a cheap bounty hunter years ago, and it uh-huh. gathered cobwebs so bad because I 
truck all my life and uh, didn't have time. But like I said, just mow my yard and that was it. So, but uh, right. I've been I've been at it probably three years solid now. And uh, uh, but you know it comes right back. It's kind of like riding a bike. You pick up what you remembered and you go from there. Exactly right. So you started with a bounty hunter. You said? Yeah, I can't even remember the name of it. It was so antique. I mean, it's like a square box and all that. And uh, I think I paid something like fifteen dollars for it at a yard sale, and because uh, uh-huh. I wanted to see what was under the ground. It's always been uh, a mystery to me what we walk on. And uh, so, I, like, I, I went through the cancer thing, and uh, I got disabled through all this, and it took me four years to get back on my feet. And and I bought another land star, I mean a bounty hunter land star, because that's where I picked up from the bounty hunter, and I used that probably right. seven months. And then I went to uh, an AT Garrett, I'm AT Pro Garrett, and uh, uh-huh. took me a little bit to learn it, but I love it. I love that machine. It's a good machine, really yeah. good. Yeah. Machine. And there's still little things that I still learn from what I can do with it, and. Uh, and, and it, once you master that, I guess I'm old school. Once I master something, I like to stay with it for a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know a lot of people I don't that know. once they've mastered that AT Pro, they just stick with it. It's it's hard to switch. I mean, once you, you know, once you find something you like and you're used to and you kind of know your machine and know yeah, what exactly. you're into you, you just become accustomed to that. And it's, it's hard to switch. I mean, it's hard to change as long as you're digging some goodies, you know, that's what counts. Yeah, and I even got a hold of you once and then inquired about a different coil uh, because I'm Uh still using the same 8x11 stock coil. And and I learned there was a coil called a nail that I'm looking at, the snake. Yeah, I don't know if you heard of it. I'm I'm looking on reviews and, and researching that right now before I... I think about buying another AT Pro and go with that nail coil on it, and that way I'll have my stock coil on that one. Yeah, that's a good idea to have. Well, I like having a backup machine, and then also it's nice that you don't have to switch out the coils every time. You can just switch machines. Hey, and, uh, Gypsy, real quick, you're ahead. you're okay. But you're pretty quiet. If you, I mean, it'll it'll be fine if you can't. But is something going on that you're a little quiet tonight? Let me turn the volume up. Is that better? That is a little better. Thank you. Good deal. You're welcome. Sorry about but that. But yeah, uh, no problem. I have the uh, nail snake coil, and uh, I really love it. And uh, I've used it a lot in the rivers. When I river detect, you know, kind of help me to get in between the rocks and in the crevices and stuff. And I've used it on farmland. And I know that um, from what I've seen from a lot of your posts, uh, Philip, that you hunt a lot of, you know, old homesteads and farm properties and stuff. And uh, it works really good in a lot of those areas where there's a lot of higher high iron content. And so uh, I recently, uh, Garrett provided me with that super sniper coil. And so I'm going back over some areas that I've hunted with that snake coil, and I'm still pulling more stuff out. So The, I, um, the snake coil is roughly yeah. the, the size of the, um, the, the Garrett hockey puck one, correct? Yeah, yeah. It does remind me of hockey puck. <laughs> it's roughly the size, so in width, it gets a little smaller at the end because of the shape of it. So okay. I guess it's considered more of a double D, even though it's encased. Um, because of the shape, it's more of an oval shape okay. instead of. Um, so uh, it is is it is it a coil. double D? Is it a double D? I guess it is. And, I haven't even uh, really thought about it. The hockey puck's a concentric? Yeah, it's a concentric. I, and I've been really impressed with that concentric because I, I like I going like back cons- over to there, I've already used my other one. I like concentric Go ahead, coils son. a lot. 
Um, you know, we've talked about this before. I like, I, I like concentric coils and I, I prefer and usually recommend that if the factory makes the coil you want, I, I in my personal opinion, for the most part, I prefer, you know, that coil, those coils. Just a just yeah. a su- suggestion. Just a yeah, suggestion. I, I get it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm gonna say, I, I got an area, a place, one of the first homes that I detected, and uh, mm-hmm. this is where I found them, the moonshine jug. It got burnt down, and so I hired a, a man to come in with his dozer. And I told him we we're only going to take off just enough to get underneath the tin from the roof that fell in. But it's been that way, and, if, and now on fire, burnt down 20 years. The tin crumbled like glass. Ooh. And oh, we, dozed it off, we dozed it off anyway and uh, thought I was going to solve my problems. And uh, uh-huh. nails and the little miniature tiny tin fragments so I bought a magnet with two wheels, and I went over it and over it and over it, and I had a nice pile of scrap iron and nails and stuff. And so I tried mm-hmm. to detect it, and you can't get you can't get nothing between anything, and mm-hmm. uh, you couldn't even set your pinpointer down. So, I mean, it's just a wow. constant. It just does. Constantly. Yeah, it's, it's that bad. So I got this grand idea. I will tell it. So I tilled it in the uh-huh. spring. Uh-huh. And I went back here towards the end of summer. I was doing some brush hogging for a farmer for him. And, uh, and I walked around, and I found a marble, found a button, and then I found a walking liberty, 1943, half dollars. And that wow. got me involved again. And I said, okay, there's got to be more stuff in this place. But and that's why I called you. It's still on my mind. I just can't write this place off yet. Yeah, there's definitely more stuff there. I mean, if you're finding a walk in Liberty and all that and marbles and stuff like that after you tilled it, something I've done um, it's a, uh, a property that actually my cousin owns. And um, if you can get, you know, consent from the owner of the property... Um, I have actually dug out areas and made a pile of the dirt and detected that area and then put it back um, and pulled coins that way. I even because, sifted, Gypsy. Have you? Built, yeah. Built my own sifter box and the whole nine yards. I just said I was targeting it there where I found that coin, but uh, more nails, more broken glass. And the beautiful pottery, the pieces I found, I said, would have been so fabulous. I mean, it was mm-hmm. unbelievable, the pottery that I found, the pieces. So wow. I was just thinking there's maybe there's a Superman coil out there that can get through everything I'm wanting to do with that place, yeah, because I can't write it off yet. Yeah, don't don't write it off. I'd keep going back over that area with whatever kind of coils, you know, try out some different stuff if you can um either one of those coils um Uh i really love but like i said i just i've only tried out that small sniper coil twice now and i'm super impressed Mm -hmm. i can't believe how much i even missed going back over some of the same areas even with my um the uh, nail snake coil um i i have a friend in florida with Kelly Co, uh-huh. uh, uh, Stevie Ray Meeks, and uh, I've invited him up. He's coming up this spring. He's going to bring different sizes of coils and stuff because I've talked to him about some of these issues too, and as well, I talked to you and just uh-huh. trying to figure out where's my happy medium at with trying to resolve right. this issue. So I thought about letting Stevie Ray come up, and uh, he said he's up for the challenge and. Let him go through it and see what he can come up with. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's possible I may be going to Virginia in uh, December. I'll, I'll get in contact with him and let you know if I'm up that way. And we can okay. get to hunt together or something. 
But um, okay. yeah, don't give up. Don't give up on that spot. And uh, yeah, any chance you can get to try out some different coils, um, that that would be great because um, I mean, you just never well, know. You know, what I've found off of this property, uh, and they all say, the farmers all around here tell me uh, everybody was poor, that they had no money, you're not going to find much, and blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. But when I see a sidewalk from the lane at this place, it goes all the way to the house to his uh, root cellar, uh, his his, uh, pump house. Uh, people back then that were poor couldn't afford sidewalks that long. I can't afford a sidewalk that long. Right, so, right. So I know there's something there to be said with that property. Definitely. So that's just my opinion, but, you know. All, all my years yeah, doing that's... all my years doing this, the, the only thing I'm certain of is you can't be certain of anything. Uh, I mean, really... I've hunted places that that were fancy and fancy scroll work on the outside of the house and don't find much. And then you hunt an old small farmhouse that looks, you know, like there wouldn't be anything. And you find stuff like crazy in the yard. Yeah, I just, I've never, you know, I, I sure wouldn't let it discourage me, you know. Well, it got frustrating to somewhat degree because I spent two years at this place trying to resolve an issue that I can't get around it. And, um, you know, like I said, I've done about everything from sifting from wheelbarrow and everything. I said, uh, you get tired at the point, and I just tried to put it to bed for a while. And I said, we'll get a new game plan somewhere, but I just can't write this place off. Yeah. So There's definitely stuff still there. And, um this one property that I hunt, um, every time I go back to East Texas, um, you know, it's still yielding stuff and it's just trying to get past that because this house burned too. And it's trying to get past all that iron and that, the you know, the layers there. And if you can get down past Back. those layers, that's where the goodies are. Yep. What, what and, about... And like a... Go ahead, Mike. I was going to say, what what about out and out out around it? Um, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, it's on a flat area, which is not very many places like that in West Virginia. But over the hill, they just like they tossed everything they had, bottles, cans, everything over the hill. That's where I came in investing in a set of knee pads because the broken glass was so bad. And that's just how I discovered that old root cellar. There was boards over top of it, a tree growing over top of it, but I could see the one wall. And I asked the landowner if I could remove all this stuff and check it out. It says I could as long as I put things back, which I did. But... Uh, I have, and I'm not, I'm going, I'd say I've found close to seven to $800 worth of nice old bottles, jugs, pottery jugs, stone crocks, things like that out wow. of that root cellar. Mm-hmm. Even wow. an old tricycle that was petrified. Huh. I mean, in oh, a train, wow. an old boat train. And I just yeah. said, there's no use bringing my metal detector back here because it's not going to be needed. I got work to do. Yeah. So it was the digging tools and raking tools and and uh, yeah, and I never got one cut out of all that six weeks that I worked on that root cellar. Wow! But the jugs tell and the me, bottles I've got about that just jug. <laughs> yeah, about that's, that jug that's, I, that's it was one of I pulled out a, a white porcelain coffee pot with no holes, got the lid on it and everything. And I go, oh, wow, this is pretty cool. Then a milk bottle. And I go, that's pretty cool, too. And I was just starting to set them off the side. And when I seen this thing in the ground, I couldn't figure out what it is. And I got my shovel in there. And I kept tapping it and tapping it. And I said, what, the, what is that? Not metal. And I got digging around some more of it. And finally, I pried it up a little bit. And I said, oh, my God, quit there. And I started hand digging it out, realized what it was. It was that old moonshine jug, old brown moonshine stone jug, handle and all there. And my wife about flipped, and she goes, that's mine. 
And <laughs> when we got home, when we got home, she cleaned it out. And she, oh, look at this! And, oh, she got the creeps because it had a snake hide inside of that bottle. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of snake? But, was yes. it? Uh, that was one of my favorite finds. Uh, you know, people when I displayed stuff, well, you didn't metal detect that. I could, yes, but I was metal detecting when I found this there, and the detector wasn't needed. It was hand shovel on, on, on the premises, and you know, you dug right. and you dug. Wow. So, but yeah, it was amazing what it came out of that place, and this is the same place. That I'm talking about, it's got all this tiny metal fragment. For the stuff I have yeah. recovered out of around it, uh, it, you know, uh, it's amazing. I said, there's more to this place. Mm. So, wow. Yeah, there's definitely oh, yeah. more there, I'm sure. I'll definitely. tell you. Oh, I, I think so too. Here, here's my opinion, and this is just my opinion. Okay. I, I mean, and believe me, I am wrong often. It's it's a place I would have given up on. And the only reason I yeah. say that is, you know, how much work is it worth for what what you you might find, and and you might not. I mean, it's all a gamble. But I've given up on places before that. Um, you know, have given really good. I, there's a there's a field site a buddy of mine took me two years ago, and there was well, it, it was where a house had been, and it was surrounded by field, but the trees were still standing, and there was grass. And we, after hunt, hunting it there, hunting there hours, I was done with it. I was tired of pulling up pop cans and all the junk and everything. <laughs> well, he he kept going back to it and going back to it and. Just last year, he ended up finding two gold coins out of there. And, yeah. Whoa. You, you know, so, but, but at the same time, you know, I, I do see people sometimes putting too much into a site for it never to re- really return anything for all the effort. Exactly. And, it, you know, yeah. nobody has the right answer, but I, my personal, I would move on because I know, yeah, I might be missing something, but for all the work, I know I can go down the road and find good stuff. But that's yeah, just, I was going to, me. I was going to auctions a lot and buying stuff, relics, and bottles, and stuff like that. But when I discovered this place, it relieved me from all the auctions, and I quit going to auction because I'm finding this stuff because I'm I collect axes, and they call me the axe man, but I collect axes and uh, and the price of axes at the auctions that was good, and I knew it was eighteen hundred was just. I couldn't. I just couldn't bring myself to pay that. So that brought me into metal detecting, also to, to increase my metal detecting and get stronger and stay at it. And what I could go out for an hour or two became uh, three hours, then it became four hours, then it became six hours. And six hours about drains me, but uh, that's a, that's about as long as I can hunt now. But. <laughs> But yeah, the metal detecting industry is has grown, and people are going out there. And I like the relics, Mike Gypsy. I do. I like the relics because I like finding things that was history that carved this right. nation. And I think the axe played a major, major role in our carving our history. It did everything Definitely. for. Us. Absolutely, and, uh, and I'm I'm with you. I'm a relic guy, but go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, that that's what gets me enthused. I mean, when I learn of a place, and I'm getting directions, verbal directions from this farmer, where you go to this one oak tree, and it forks off this way, and you want to go up, fork off to the <laughs> right, and you drop over a couple. You know, these are the directions I get, and sometimes it takes me. One place took me two weeks to find it. But, uh, yeah, you, once you find it and you see the layout, you try to figure out where was the house at. Well, you look for where was the water established, and you start piece, piecing this thing together, and you sit down, and you look at this, and these people live way back in here, live way back here in the boonies, uh, around no one else around them. And you just try to figure what were they experiencing back then. And, you know, it, so, yeah. You start laying yeah. out your areas, and you start finding things. 
But the one thing is just the same as animals. You got to find a water source. And That's once I find a water thing. source, I so yeah. yeah. Once you find that water source, and then you can kind of track it because they would have had to, you know, taken their horses and their yeah. other animals and livestock. They even a lot and, of them would even take their baths there, you know. So. And Gypsy, I run into bundles of horseshoes and ox shoes. Oh man, I I have never found ox shoes before. I find so many horseshoes in this area, but not ox shoes. I don't know if it and mule shoes. Much of a Texas, really? See, not yeah. much here. Mule shoes either. Uh, mainly horseshoes. But uh, yeah, you, you think about that. They they lived hard, and yes, they were poor. So I don't. My coin findings are very limited in these places that I travel. Most of them are by ATV and, uh, that I have to get to. And sometimes I can only take the ATV so far, then I have to hike the west, rest of the way. But uh, yeah. even so, um, I'm, I'm out there. My wife got so worried about me going out to these places because she I'd never be able to find you. So she put an <laughs> app on my phone, uh, app 360 Life, 360 Life. So she goes, at least I'll be able to find you if anything happens. Because I'm not, I'm only operating on a half a heart. So, but I still oh don't walk on eggshells and I still live my life to the fullest. So well, that's, that's just wonderful. me. I'm, yeah, I'm glad you're, you're able to get out and, and have those adventures. And, and good for something you. about the thrill of the hunt and to get out there and yeah. explore and, and put yourself in, in to try to put yourself in the, the people's shoes that lived there yeah. once before. And, exactly. And, I did a change up today, and usually I don't do this. There's uh, Mark Olson. I don't know if you know of Mark or not, but he commented on me when I'd find a lot of coins or something. He said, usually that's out of your element. You usually don't find that kind of stuff or go to them places. Well, today I finished the ballpark. Dollar eighty-seven and clad and a couple of nuts and washers and and bottle caps and stuff like that and I, I can almost tell you what I was digging when you when I got this, the numbers and I said well that's a penny that's a quarter you know that's got to be a dime uh, I just yeah. found it was all clad nothing silver and but I wanted to yeah. finish it and put it to bed for the winter and I said I'm done with this place so I just find that boring so I said. <laughs> I'd rather be digging iron in the woods than I would clad in a park. Yeah. So that's just me. Yeah. There's something about digging out there at the old old home sites to me and digging something from the past because there's so much that I learn every time um, that I didn't know about, you know. Um, yeah. Until I dig it and then I research it and I'm like, wow. You know, learn something new, and I love that part of it, uh, the part, yeah, of, the part of, I, of it coming. I found this big piece of iron that I didn't know exactly for sure what I had, but I knew it was something, and I just couldn't put my finger on it. And I went to ID me, and there's a woman on there named Jenny. I can't remember her last name, but Jenny's helped me out with several things. She's kind of adapted to me uh, to help me out because she knows now what I'm doing out here. <laughs> but uh, it turned out to be a foot brake from an 1850 freight wagon, horse-drawn freight wagon, one of the bigger ones. Oh, that's oh wow. Yeah, and, and it was long. I have even found a Model T uh, front axle of a Model T. I mean, you just never know what you're going to find. <laughs> uh, do you have, like, a, fa- a favorite find besides your jug, like a, a favorite metal detecting find? Yes, I do. Uh, and this just happened recently. It was about a, a month ago. Now, I don't know if you've seen uh-huh. pictures, but I have said I'm an axe collector. Uh-huh. Well, I got a new permission, and the house was early 1900s. But the more I looked at the place, and, and, and like I said before, you can tell there was something else here and just by looking at the layout of the place. And I started hunting over there. 
and I got it this big signal. I think it rang close to almost to 80, but it was just my pinpointer, my pro was t- laying it out for me. Well, this ain't no penny. And uh, <laughs> so I dug. It was four inches down. Every place I dug, I hit metal. I hit metal. Mm-hmm. And when I pulled it out, it was a 13 inch wide broad axe. Oh, that's cool. And, uh, oh. Oh yeah, I like the dyed, and I did a little video of it, and and sh- and showed showed it. I was just flabbergasted when I found that, and I said, "Wow!" And uh, I bought me a new handle for it, and then I took the torch to it, sanded, did this, did this, and a friend of mine, he's going to draw a Viking hat and uh, skull and crossbones, and put it on that handle for me. Because that's what the axe looks like on the old Vikings, and he's going to take a wood graver and burn it all in for me. So when he gets that done, I'll be putting it together, and I'll be putting it on Facebook and on the digging groups. Do you do you find many? Do you find many? Do you find many axes there in in, uh, West Virginia? Last last year I found twelve. This year I think I'm at sixteen. Okay. So they're about so, uh, it. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. So, uh, you know, yeah, I, I, I got my share of axes. That's uh, fine. But, yeah. yeah. And that's what, I'm, that's what I'm really seeking when I go out there. I said, this place ought to give me a couple axes. And it usually does. Some of them are pretty toast, but some of them are not. Uh, on, I guess it on, depends on the acid. Excuse me? Sorry. Go ahead. I guess it depends on the acid levels in the ground, how things get ate up in some places it doesn't. Right. But, uh, right. Yeah. I, one of my, we were talking on, we do two shows a week, Monday and Tuesday night. I, I think it was last week on Tuesday night show. It came up like a bucket lister kind of thing. And one that I did, I would love to find a tomahawk or trade act sometime that, yeah, I, in Ohio, I do a lot of relic hunting in the fields. I found a lot of axes and I like them too. I love iron relics. Um, I, I think they're really cool and neat and where a lot of people don't, won't even dig iron. And, uh, you know, of course you got to limit how much you're digging and what you're digging at, at some places. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's definitely a trade axe or a tomahawk. I could you imagine? Do you use uh electrolysis mic by chance? I haven't in years, but yeah, I have. Yeah, that I do all my axes, electrolysis, and some of the tools I find also. I've, you know, I found many different types of tools, from automobiles to hand tools, and uh-huh. I put them all through electrolysis. Yeah, even horseshoes. Yeah. I, I still I enjoy finding horseshoes. Even they can be your mule shoes would be quite smaller. Mm. Yeah, but, yeah, but I did find I did find a uh, ox half of an ox shoe because ox shoes come in two halves for a foot. It's a, it's a two half shoe, and I did find an uh, an ox shoe with that with that hatchet. Well, I mean with that axe, that broad axe, just well, wasn't even two feet away from it. Hmm. So wow. I knew, yeah, I knew this place, even though the house was early nineteen hundreds. I knew because you could see the ridge line in the back, and I, I look back there, and they had a well coming out of the side of the hill, and they had it blocked up with a plate in front of it. I've never seen a well like that, but that was their water source. And I says, right here is where things laid out, and that's what this ridge is about. It's an old ridge, but you can still faintly make it out. But these are the key things that I've learned doing this is. You got to look at layouts, low spots, high spots. Is there anything prominent that's following and continuing, you know, to, for a foundation possibility and stuff like that? And that's why I just sit down and take a look at the place once I've located it and see how I want to hunt this and where do I want to hunt it at. Right. That's just my, my opinion. Yeah, when you, when you do enough of what you're doing um... – I mostly in Ohio, I, I hunted fields, but I would look for those little rises in the field and that little hill with the, with, uh, you know, that looked a little out of place or a lot of times you see hills and in, in the fields and there's 
it's almost like a, a little bit of the sides been dug out and stuff like that. And I, I got, yes. I've gotten really good over the years at spotting potential sites that, uh, you know, maybe were pre predated the maps. Yes. Them higher areas in them fields, Mike, are good places that they plow them. Uh, the good places for airheads. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I did quite. I came from originally from Champaign County, Ohio, and we did a lot of airhead hunting up there. You know, wow. uh, yeah. That's very cool. Yeah, you. Were, we were talking about that before the show. Um, what What are some of your favorite uh, Indian artifacts you found? Uh. I've got a double groove uh, axe head. Mm. It's probably one and a pestle, and and I got a real nice uh, arrowhead point museum quality uh, black oh. fish often flint. And uh, uh, are you out of Ohio, Mike? I'm actually in Texas now. You're in Texas. Yeah, there was I'm a guy named Greg Shipley. Yeah, there was a I'm... man named Greg Shipley. Yeah, well, I've, had him on friend show. Mine. I've had him on oh, the show. Oh, you have? Yeah, Greg is a uh, just a wonderful person, isn't he? Very knowledgeable. I don't know. Oh, he's, he's, he is the book. He is the Bible. Mm-hmm. He is one of my go-to guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, this man, that man can do some excavating uh, up a fort. And what amazed me about him is he collects, you know, I said I did some sifting back there. He collects all these pot of pottery fragments out of these uh, fort recovery, like fort they find. Mm-hmm. In the wintertime, he will piece them together like a puzzle and glue them back together. Oh, well, I didn't know oh, that. Yeah. I Oh, yeah, Greg. Yeah. Greg is a... Oh, I go way back, Greg. We showed livestock against each other. Oh, no kidding. Oh, oh yeah. That? I yeah, know he... Greg real well. <laughs> He he is something else, man. You're you're right. He's the book. He's you know you know what what's always amazed me about him. Well, first his research and stuff is just incredible. Uh, uh, yeah. You, you know I I say, and, and I hope this. Uh, there's a lot of people I like in this hobby. A lot of people I respect, but there's very few people I look up to. And Greg yeah. is definitely one of them. And I don't mean that disrespectful. He's just, he's on a whole nother level than, than the majority of us. Um, he his, is the historical society nightmare. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they get so aggravated with him. <laughs> well, the historical societies like him. The archaeologists aren't a fan. Yeah. He, yeah. Cause he does a lot of yeah. talks at, uh, at the historical societies and stuff, but, uh, What's always made, amazed yeah. me is he'll post a little twisted up piece of nothing and he'll tell you exactly what it is. You know, he posted uh-huh. this little this little twisted up piece of something and here it was a, a blah, blah, blah off of a trade gun from this period to this period. And it's like, wow, that's amazing. You know, I've probably found one of those and thrown them away. <laughs> Wouldn't have had a clue what it is, but, you know, Greg does. He knows what that stuff his, is. His mentor was, lived two houses from me, hmm. and he's not he's not alive today. His name was Cliff, and that's why I'll just leave it to that. And Cliff would be called in when they did excavating, and they ran into skeletons and stuff like this, and he would come in, be called in to identify for like Indian art, uh, Indian graves and stuff like that. Oh, He's wow. the only man I knew that had two complete skeleton Indian skeletons in his home in a glass case huh. with lights wow. on. Yeah, yeah. and uh, this was who, this who, this was Greg Shipley's mentor, and uh, Cliff taught Greg a lot, and and he's with him because you could go to Cliff's house, and you could see you were talking about Indian artifacts while this guy had them. This man had him, and he was an old fella, and he's collected them all his life. Oh, wow. Yeah. He's huh? <laughs> wow. Yep, that was a, you know, when you have people like that surround you in your lifetime, it strikes an interest, and that's what's got me in this. I'm a solo hunter, and I, 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 I hunt alone quite a bit, and uh, 
I don't know why. I guess because I hunt my pace, do my thing, and, and I enjoy that. I enjoy myself being out there and uh, what I find and what I discover. So, you know, I, I think about all the things that's been found with people that I've known. And then I've got a guy, like I told you, down in Florida, who's seen my collection that I've got now. And he just can't believe it. He said, you have found so, so much stuff. And it's because I'm still targeting 1,800 sites that no longer stand there. And, yeah, uh, but uh, that's, that's what, it's just a thrill. It's a thrill, like you said. It's a thrill. You never know what you're going to dig. Mm-hmm. Right. Absolutely. So, so I've and, seen and, some pictures of your relic room and your... Um, so it, um, I will, Gypsy. Uh, I, I had a video up. I did a small video of uh, one, and I did. It. And the winter time, I get bored, and I like to. Well, I don't want to be a show off, but but yes, uh, I've got a nice collection of locks, 1850 smokehouse locks, and stuff like that. And yeah, I even one of my first finds at a second homestead from the one we talked about earlier. The first gun part I found was from an 1850 Colt, uh, Navy, oh, Navy, because wow. Colt made a five shot and Navy made the six shot. The way I think that's the way I read it, black powder revolver cylinder. Oh, well, wow. I said, wow. where's, where's the gun? Well, I looked wow. around, I found, I found not one gun, but I found two guns and, but they would none of them fit the cylinder <laughs> at the same place. Wow. <laughs> yeah, the only Long guns I've found. Wow! So I've never so, found a, a gun, just a toy gun. <laughs> so, and, and again, if that doesn't bring somebody's excitement, what will? You know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, well, it's kind of funny to me. There, you know, there's people out there that does nothing for them. They, they're they're coin hunters and stuff. But I'm with you. I love the yeah. relics. I just, I'll yeah. take a relic over a coin any day. Me too, yeah. Mike. Uh, that's me. And, and I know Gypsy does the same things, you know, and she, you need to start saying them stinking Lincolns, Gypsy, in your YouTubes. <laughs> them stinking Lincolns <laughs> suck. I don't like them. <laughs> yeah. uh, right. But, no, uh, yeah, you know, I found a little iron. And my wife just thought that was adorable too. On the other side of the house, where I found the guns, and uh, the thing is only like two inches. And what I found out to be, it was a salesman sample. Oh, that's uh, cool. And, yeah, and uh, so yeah, I I I've got some nice relics, I think, uh, and uh, and I'm still not done. I mean. I'm I, a, a doctor there in Parkersburg, West Virginia, owned a couple of farms, and uh, he one of the farms. There was four eighteen hundred sites on it, and mm-hmm. one room schoolhouse. Well, oh. to, yeah, the well, the one house I was looking for it took me two weeks to find, <laughs> and I thought that I found it, but that was a one-room schoolhouse, and I was a little bit disappointed. But I'm going back because I learned something about my AT pros. I need to go back there this spring. But uh, that's where I finally found the other, the the fourth homestead, and it was on top of the hill, and uh, that's where I found the Model T front axle. And, uh, oh. Yeah. Now, what'd you do with that axle? Did you take it home, or did you leave it, or? I got it out there, and I got me a, uh, a little 28-foot camper that I gutted, and I used Ren Electric, too, and I use that for my displays for, like, the axes and stuff like that. Oh, I've even got cool. the old 1800 plow beams, too, and the plow shoes. Oh, I've got cool. probably 15 plow shoes. Hmm. Wow. That's cool. Very cool. Oh, yeah, I... But you ought to see my scrap iron pile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you there. It's I've huge. Got... I got. <laughs> <laughs> it's huge. I've got to get it loaded on the truck and cash it in. I, I so I start one every year, and I and I haven't got it out of here yet. But I'll get it someday. 
<laughs> Are they still not hurting anything? Right. Yeah. Cash in a bunch. I've got huh? like four or five boxes full of scrap iron and scrap metal that uh, I'm going to bring to East Texas and I'll give to my brother and dad to do <laughs> what they want to with it. <laughs> yeah. My pile is almost to my waist. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty big, and there's some pretty heavy stuff. I mean, once you dig it, and I don't want to make a mess and just lay it there. You can't put it back in the ground. Right. You know, it just won't fit. It just don't fit. And uh, so you you ought to bring it home. And I got a backpack. I back some of the backpack some of the stuff out, and the other stuff I, I can get to my four wheel. I carry it to it. But yeah, it's a it's an adventure. Yeah, I, I hate I hate out field hunting, digging big iron and and carrying it back out. But you got to do it. You sure better not leave it for the farmers to run over and stuff. That's well, a, that's yeah, or idea. somebody tr- walking through the bush. Through, I hunt mushrooms, and that's what another reason it got me in uh, detecting these old homesteads because I, I'm an avid mushroom hunter and you'd run into these places and then you start asking around and, uh, yes. And farmers let me know. And then and said, well, my brother's got a farm over on this hill over here on this that road on Klein road. Y'all ask him, he got a couple of them places and I'd ask him and he, yeah, yeah. You know, it just keeps going around. They keep me busy <laughs> That's and wonderful. they enjoy it. They really do enjoy it. So it's a great way to they, get permissions. Uh, yeah, uh, and they always come back and check on. Did you find anything neat? <laughs> yeah, uh, not yet. I'm working on it. A lot of them farmers but, yeah. know the history of their land better than any map or historical record, too. And there's where my research comes in. I don't really have to do nothing because I've always, as a young lad, I always respect the older, the elders. Right. And right. elders always had some fantastic stories to tell you. Now, they might be fabricated a little bit. But there's always some truth <laughs> in all their stories. <laughs> you know, so, and you just pay attention closely, and then you start asking questions, and then they get a little precise and tell you, well, you need to go here and there and here. Now, this is okay, but yeah. That's how I've been staying busy. I'm finding places. I probably got about 18 homesteads that no longer exist in the woods. Wow. That I've been hunting. Yeah, I, I tell people, if you don't know how to do research and overlay maps and all that, then go go talk to the farmers. Go talk to the locals. Yep. And those older people, man, they'll, they'll tell you all kinds of stuff if you approach them right. Yeah, I wanted to find some Civil War-related items. But I did research the Civil War in this county. It's, I really haven't got out of this county yet. And uh, this county had almost nil to none activity at all as the Civil War. So I gave up on the Civil War, and I said, well, let's do the old homesteads. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's what I've been doing. There you go, yeah. yeah. Now, what what kind of interesting people have you met? Oh, I'll tell you what, you know, these old farmers uh, that's retired and they might have some beef or cows they tend to, but they, they love to talk and they love when someone listens, Mm -hmm. you know, and I've always taken the time, I've always taken the time, even if it's an hour, he might be a little windy, but I sure do enjoy listening to his conversation, his stories. The one told me. It's one place that I'm thinking about trying to finish up tomorrow that he had a jar full of Indian head pennies. Mm. And he thinks someone, yeah, he thinks someone stole them out of his house before they tore it down. Because he can't find that jar full of Indian head pennies. And we're not talking a small jar neither. So, (laughs) yeah. How cool would that be to find? Oh, Oh, my gosh. That's what I always tell my wife when I leave. Well, I'm going to go out and see if I can find my mason jar. <laughs> I, still, yeah. I still am a firm believer there's a mason jar out there still in the ground that hasn't been found in these old homesteads of West Virginia because oh, they didn't I, go to bank. Right, right. You, you know, there's so many uh, stories about caches and, and 
you know, there's one particular magazine, and I really like it, but they've been talking about the same caches for years and lost military payroll and all that, and I don't buy it. But I'll tell you, back back then, I do I do believe a lot of farmers, a lot of, uh, you know, people, they cashed th- their money. But, I, you know, I don't necessarily believe in all those lost payrolls of millions and gold and all that, but... There's definitely jars of coins out there. Yeah. You know how people complain about finding pop tabs. Mm-hmm. You know, because they hunt parks and stuff. Well, my mm-hmm. my complaint is mason jar lids. My gosh, mason do I find lids, a lot yeah. of mason jar lids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If, I, if I never dig another mason jar lid, I'll be happy. <laughs> Plus, it's got money in it. Right. So it's got yeah, money in it. Got yeah. Money in it. <laughs> yeah, Mason, uh, we all find our we all find the things out there that aggravate us the most and Pop Tab does that and Mason Jar does it for me. Yeah, I've I've dug <laughs> my fair share of them, let me tell you. Especially relic oh. hunting, but uh yeah, there's I, hey, it's still you know, I, I stay hopeful one of these days it'll be attached to a jar of coins. Yeah, that's what I'm still hoping too. <laughs> a few uh, months I think it was Mark Olson. Mark Olson, uh, he went out today because an old lady told him that there was an old farmhouse right over there. The rumor is that there's a jar, or was a jar full of coins buried in the ground. So they went there first thing today, and he said he ain't going back. <laughs> <laughs> Must be a lot of junk in the ground there too. Yeah, that's what he said. Must be. But, uh, yeah, I'll tell you a, a quick story that that'll keep you excited about about the possibilities um we had a couple guys on a few months ago that there in ohio they found i want to say 64 silver coins they weren't in a jar and most of them came out of one hole but the other the the 10 or 12 of them were like in a 10 foot by 10 foot area they found 64 silver coins and the newest one I believe was 1842 or 1844. Wow. Yeah, how's that for a nice little cache of coins? Hmm. The biggest bill I found was an 1898 Barber Quarter and a 1909 or 1902 Barber Dime and an 1899 Indy Head Penny and a Wheat wheat Penny all in the same hole. That's the biggest one I found. Oh, wow. Well, you're there with most of us, the majority of us for sure. But they're out yeah, there. Yeah, I don't know? find. I, I just don't find much silver. Yeah. I mean, I like to, but uh, but I, I'm happy with my relics. I really am. And uh, so it is what it is. Everybody likes to find what they like to find, and, and more power to them. I'm, I'm all for that. As long as they're happy and enjoying themselves, it's a good day in the neighborhood. Absolutely. I That's agree. So I, true. You know, I've spent, uh, you know, and when I lived in Ohio, I would spend my fall to spring in fields, and and I had whole seasons where I didn't find a silver coin out of a field, but I might have found twenty, twenty large cents, you know, um, yeah, which is cool. But I, you know, even you find enough of those, and you've had enough. They're usually pretty crusty out of the fields, and uh-huh. um. I still, I'll take a good relic over a coin any day. I don't know. It's just, but each, you're right. Each their own. I mean, I know people that that look at look at my my relics that ain't ain't nothing special, and they they could care less. And I I get that, you know. But I, uh, you know what I'm look. I'm. Go ahead, Gypsy. No, I was just going to ask you. Um, do you ever find any um, old jewelry or anything while you're out there? And it's. I have found. Three, three rings so far, and one mm-hmm. it's like a silver brooch, but it's like a yeah. shaped of it like an arrow on each end. It's very slender, and uh, mm-hmm. I did find that. But uh, one silver ring, and the other two was child rings, and one was flat, and one still good. I mean, but yeah, that's about all I did on jewelry. How many rings have you know. found, Gypsy? I've, I know you beach hunted a lot. Uh, I'm, I don't know if we've ever asked that. Oh, man. You know, I wish I would have kept better track 
<laughs> over the years of how many. I remember in three months when I lived in Galveston one year, I'd found over 5,000 coins. And wow. um, I think it was 34 rings that that season. Oh, this was wow. in the summer. How many, wow. gold, how many um, gold rings have you found? Do you know? And gold rings, I couldn't even tell you. And you know what's really sad, though? I haven't found one gold ring this year, and it's killing me. Not mm. one. They've been silver. They've been, well, platinum. Did find that one platinum ring this year. Oh, but I found a, I think I'm only a gold. 16. Go ahead. You found I found a gold, a gold. I found a gold pen the other day. I thought it was my first gold because I have not found anything gold yet. And uh, looked at it is from Chicago. Uh, let me see, I got it right here. It is made by Chicago Taylor Association, and uh, it's got a picture. Of, it's gold plated. Turned out to be gold plated. It's got scissors at the bottom and an iron in the middle. And uh, this looks like a four leaf clover in a shape about that size, about bigger than a dime, smaller than nickels. And huh. I guess uh, I guess this was a they were selling pants for five dollars. Well, huh. people we didn't have five dollars, so they made a sale for a dollar eighty six. Hmm. And um, so I think uh, uh, Roger Dittleberger uh, gave me this information, posted it for me. And uh, wow. they did this sale for them pants for a dollar eighty six. If you bought a pair, you got this free gold plated pen. So. Then knocked out my gold. <laughs> oh, it's gold cool. plate. Wow. Well, that's cool. That's a neat find, though, piece of history. Yeah. Though. You know, you, you talk about, Mike, you wanted to go back to Ohio here. Uh, next spring or sometime in the spring or early summer, I grew up in Ohio, and on our old farm, our house, I remember my dad remodeling, it was put together by wooden pegs, oak beams. Oh. And... People that own it now that have asked me stories about it, and I've told them, and I told them what I do, and they invited me to come up and metal detect that yard. And I said, "Now, wouldn't that be something if I could find one of my old toys?" Oh, that would that be would very be. cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to go doing that. Yeah, that that sounds like a like a good time, um, and put together with wood wood. Uh, what do they call them? Uh, I know what you're. They they would pin huge, them with wood. Huge beams. Yep. And huge beams, and they put them wooden pegs in there, moat pegs to hold them together. Yeah, I got a really cool story about that. Uh, a couple years ago, a buddy of mine, Donnie, was uh, he he lived uh, the next town over, and in, in between us, he was driving, and he'd uh, there was this house that sat at the edge of the lane, and. It, it always looked out of place. I mean, it, it made their driveway real tight, and they're, they're big-time farmers. You know they got big equipment. Well, uh -huh. they decided to tear it down because they they uh, couldn't they couldn't hardly get equipment in and out of the end of the driveway. On one side was a telephone pole, and on the other side was this house. Well, when you would uh -huh. drive by this house, it would look, it, to me, it looked like 30s or 40s. But what it was, the original house was was uh all beams and it was it was put together with pins like like you're talking about and then the the add-on of the house was at was still it was still log cabin type but it had it had square cut nails and stuff so it was old and uh okay. we got permission and uh boy was that place uh really good and uh it, it was really cool that the the one the one son they own thousands of acres, if I'm not mistaken. The one son, he before they tore it down, he said he told his dad he wanted to see if it was true. I, I guess his grandpa had told him that 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 was one of the original homesteads. So he started uh -huh. tearing off siding and, and seeing what it was, and then he he tore it down to bare bones, and they he moved it back onto his property. And uh, we wow. gave him we gave him uh, fines from that field to uh, he was going to put in it. Uh, he was uh, kind of like a play place for his kids or kids or grandkids. I'm not sure. I f I forget now, but uh, 
Yeah, that was I. I thought that was cool. You know, them farmers. They that's that's goes back to them farmers know know what's going on, or they heard rumors. A lot of them have lived there several generations. Yeah, several. I uh, I had a farmer up the road from me about two miles from here, let me hunt his place, and his grandpa used to live there uh, at a younger age, and his grandma. That's where I found the 1850 smokehouse lock, but I also found a stirrup. And oh. when I got it home, got it cleaned up. My wife said she's pretty, pretty knowledgeable about horse tack, and she told me she goes right there, goes to an English side saddle. That's a woman side saddle stirrup. Hmm. Well, I told I, I told the farmer about it, and he says, "Wait a minute." He goes get this picture. If his grandmother at a younger age on his side saddle on a horse with her foot in that same stirrup. Oh, how cool needless is that? to say needless to say, I surrendered it and now he's got it on his mantle <laughs> with this picture wow. of his grandmother. That's cool. That's that is really so cool. neat though. <laughs> yeah, that's the first stirrup I found that uh that I surrendered it. But I did find one in the late seventeen hundreds, seventeen eighty six about where we've got it pinpointed. And that was pretty cool. So I got one to replace it. Oh that's neat. Was yeah. it off the same property? No, it was off a different property. Okay. Yeah. Matter of fact I found I was invited to to go to Ohio to hunt with for a guy named Pete Floyd of Drama in the Dirt. He's got a YouTube channel. I don't know if you've all heard of him or not. Yeah, he was but, on uh, here. I think he was in the chat earlier. Yeah, I I was uh, with him. And we was at this uh, place where his professor Hopkins uh, was an artist and all this, and we did his his house. Uh, I got the permission for us, and we did a YouTube of it, and I found another stirrup and a lock up there at that place, too, that day. Oh, that's cool. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. What kind of lock? He found... Excuse me? What kind of lock? Uh, it, it's a late 1800s, uh, but it's pretty cool, and... Uh, uh, I haven't found one of this design. I've seen somebody find one similar to it the other uh, about a month ago. They posted it on Facebook on a, on Digging Club, but uh, I've got one too. That's cool. Nate, uh, Pete says he's still here. He's listening. So, um, well, Pete? Did you say uh, y'all made a video of that, that hunt? So, Hello, Philip. Yes, yeah, he did a video of that. He found a, a I forget what year it was, a Indian head penny, and then he got, I got any permission to go back and do follow-ups, and I can't remember what else he found. It was pretty, pretty cool that he found up there, too, that place. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, that's the first that's digging club out. I became a member was Drum in the Dirt. Oh, cool. Oh, wow. So, yeah. I very great. Uh, He's a very nice man. Videos. Yeah. He is a very nice man, and it was fun hunting with him. Are you Are you telling us that because he's in the chat? Is that why you're telling? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm no, I'm kidding. telling you that because no. I. I, <laughs> yeah, I there's, there's one thing I'll tell it how it is. If people don't like it, that's not my problem. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I was only uh, kidding. I've heard good things. I don't know him personally, but I've heard good things. Hey, Pete. Uh, maybe we'll have to get you on here soon. Let me know yeah, if you'd, if you'd like to be a guest. We're definitely uh, definitely need more. There he is. He, he's yeah, a he pretty pretty knowledgeable in history too. Good deal. What part of Ohio he, is he in? Same county, same county that I was from, Champaign County. Oh, county yeah. seat would be Urbana, Ohio. Yeah, boy, that's a good area. Yeah, a lot of farmers out through there. Good farm ground and all. Hard to, you know, the only thing about that county that, that would worry me is that's where Greg's at. <laughs> you got to wonder yeah, if he's left anything, but I, I know there's plenty. Last I knew about Greg, he was down in Greenville, Ohio, still trying to do that that, that fort. Mm -hmm. uh, now, when Greg does a fort, uh, he he marks it off with rope measures and does, he does a square 
straight down one square, does another square right beside it. He does it like the, you know, like the archaeologists do. He he don't mess around. He's the real deal. Yeah, yes. He He's very, very knowledgeable. Um, he after, moves after, his camper in, yeah. and, he's, and he stays in his camper. That's He's on the site. Mm-hmm. Wow. Of, yeah. Oh, yeah, Gypsy. That's look, up, he, look up Greg Shipley um, when you get time, and uh, you want to follow yeah. him and just watch what he – he hasn't been posting much. No, well, I'll tell you why. Greg had sold his house because he used to live right up the road from me. Mm-hmm. And Greg has sold his house, and he said he bought the house. He's always wanted to uh, always wanted to live at when he was little. And I guess it's of well, my understanding, we had a guy named Colonel Pyatt, and they had the Pyatt Castles up there in Champaign, Logan County, borderline. And somewhere in there, I think that's where Greg has bought this place and he's moved. And he's been relocating. I guess he had a sale on some of his stuff, on his spines that he's had and all that. Mm. So, that's yeah, nice. he's he's in a busy mode. I haven't heard from him on Facebook or anything this whole summer. Yeah, he's been he's been pretty absent. Um, I think he's busy for yeah. um you know something I'm 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 curious and I know we're a little off subject here. Have you ever read The Frontiersman? No. Um I fall I fall asleep when I read. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, me <laughs> too, especially, especially history. But you yeah. pick up The Frontiersman and I'm telling you you want to learn about some of the West Virginia, Ohio, Kentucky Boy, is that a book. Yeah. But um, Simon Kenton settled in Urbana. Yeah. Matter of fact, uh, the, his monument's out there in the cemetery. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, well, Simon uh, Kenton. Yeah. Simon Kenton was a very interesting fellow in the late 1700s. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Simon Kenton's his statue is in the square of Urbana, too. Oh, really? On a horse. I believe. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, he was a, you know, when we think of superhero, when I think of superheroes, or man, not superheroes, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, legend. I mean, that guy was a legend, just a legend, yeah. and so uh, just amazing. And uh, I'll tell you what, I'm with you. When I pick up a book, it puts me to sleep, and and. When when I pick up, pick up a history book, they're so boring. Um, pick up uh, the Frontiersman, and I'm telling you what, you get a hold of me, and I bet you don't fall asleep to it. Okay, it's inter- very interesting. A very good read. I will very, do that. Yeah, I'm telling you, I'm the same way. I can't I can't hardly read, especially history is so boring to read about. And uh, the Frontiersman, uh-huh. uh, Alan Eckert. Any of his books, The Dark and Bloody River, he's got several books. And I'll tell you what, try putting one of them down. It ain't going to happen. They are interesting. If you want to learn mm-hmm. about Ohio and Kentucky and, and West Virginia and Pennsylvania, that he gets into Pennsylvania in there and stuff. And uh, boy, is it interesting. Yeah, uh, there was a lot of history in Ohio. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Matter of fact, when I lived up there, we had a house that belonged. We made the historical society the tour because the Underground Railroad and all that. I lived in one of them homes. Oh, had that's one really cool. Before I moved down to here. That's very cool. Uh, mm-hmm. it didn't take no time to sell it, neither. Uh, Bill Morris. Yeah, there's, there's lots. I'm sorry. Uh, Bill Marsh said, great book. He's talking about the Frontiersman. He said, the transcripts are available online. So okay. You can probably yeah, even read it for free it online. It is incredible. I promise you that it'll be one of the best books you've ever read in your life. Um, it is just uh, amazing how Eckert's, uh, Eckert's style of writing just keeps you glued, glued to the book. Yeah. Amazing, but yeah, there's some some really interesting stuff in there about Ohio, and I'm reading. Well, I sh- I've been reading, uh, and this is horrible. This is going to sound all bad. Uh, for probably a year now, I've been reading the Dark and Bloody River, and it's amazing. But every time, you know, with kids and everything, uh, it's <laughs> really really hard. 
Yeah. Now, I did read the book North and the South, and then I watched the movie. The North and the South book kept my interest quite a bit. I did enjoy that book. I haven't read that. I haven't read that. Alan Eckert's oh. books, though, I'm telling you, they're different than any, any history stuff I've ever read. Um, he, he does a real good job, real good job writing. So what river is is that written about? Uh, the Dark and Bloody River is about the Ohio River. Um, it talks about, you know, how they traveled to Ohio River and came into Ohio and followed the streams up. It talks about some of the earliest settlements. Um, so does uh, so does uh, uh, the Frontiersman. Talks, it talks a lot about Ohio and Kentucky. And I know a gentleman met him i don't know him i met him who found one of the 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 early settlements in kentucky just on the other side of the ohio from cincinnati area from what i understand um lexington well it's it's not there anymore the town isn't you know it wasn't even a town it was a you know blockade or or what am i trying to say like a blockhouse like well you know in kentucky uh, I, I especially read in, in the book they, you know, they would build like a little village and put a fence around it, kind of thing. When they first started settling in Kentucky before before they kind of jumped into Ohio, and uh, this guy found found it, found one of them mentioned in the book, and and there were uh, there were uh, George Washington buttons and Spanish coins, wow. and a really good sight, yeah. And, oh uh, wow. Yeah, and it took him time. I found to find a pretty good button. What's that? I'm sorry. I I, I found some pretty nice buttons so far. Heavy. I love old buttons. I I, I still yeah. Like, even flat buttons, they I got like those buttons. back marks. I I like the marbles too. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love finding the marbles. Um, I'm not even sure. Yesterday, I found a button when I went out for my short hunt. Uh, using that sniper coil for only like the second time. And I found a button, and I haven't cleaned it up yet. I I don't see any back marks on it yet. But when I clean it up, I have never found a flat button. And I think I finally found one because a lot of the areas I hunt aren't old enough. But I'll send you a photo tomorrow, Mike, and... and, uh, Philip and and y'all can tell me, but it does have like a folded over shank, but it's really thin. It doesn't look very thick, like some of the flat buttons I've seen. Uh-huh. You know, one of my my favorite finds that that you found in the in the river hunting was that pick What's you that? found. Uh, remember the pick oh, you found? Yeah, yeah. I loved that. And I said, "Wow." I don't think I saw that pick. And you know it's weird because that's like the only pick I've ever pickaxe I've ever found. I've found loads of axe heads and um, See, stuff like I that. I follow you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. I do. I'll, um, I'll what tell was you I going to ask you, Philip? Go ahead. Excuse I me. Just, I was just going to say real quick: metal detecting in Texas is not easy. It's not easy to get permission. It's not easy to do research. Nothing like Ohio, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, any of that. And I'll tell you what, Gypsy, she gets it done. Yeah, I worked with a group of Texans on, on a research vessel, Mobile Oil. I used to go out and search for hydrocarbon for oil fields around the world. Been around the world three times. Oh, and, wow. Uh, oh, wow. And I, I lived and worked with them Texans because that's how it was on the boat was Texans. And I, you're not telling me. You can't tell a Texan anything. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, ain't that the truth? Mm. I love it. Um, Bill was saying in the uh, chat uh, something about a flat boat attacked by pirates on the Ohio River. Do you know anything huh. about that? You ever heard that? No. Nah. That sounds Sounds Wouldn't surprise really me. Sounds really interesting. I got a question for you, Mike. <laughs> uh huh. What type of uh, detector do you use, and why? 
Oh, I use a lot of different detectors. I'll tell you, I've been doing this a a little over 20 years, and I I used to, and and I recommend use one detector and get real good with it, but especially here in Texas where I'm not really getting to do the type of hunting I want to do. I'm more in a stage I like to try them all. But um, I would say, I wouldn't say, I'll tell you my two favorite detectors right now. Um, the Macro Multi Cruiser. It, it has a FE volume uh, function where you can run it wide open and you can turn down or turn off iron volume. You're still yeah. running wide open, um, which I like yeah. to do so you can hear what's going on in the ground and, and you're not you're you're not putting the detector on a leash and, and uh you know slowing it down. And then another one I and I've got an AT Pro. I've got an AT Pro. I honestly I don't I, honestly, I traded it for another detector, and I haven't used it. I've probably had it a little over a year. I love the AT Pro. Don't get me wrong. Love it. Um, but another really good one I like is the Rudus. Um, the Rudus Alter 71. It's You can't even get it here in the United States. Um, they're not here, but that is a super fast, deep, multi-frequency it's got 71 frequencies um it it is it's amazing the vdi goes up to 120 and i really like that detector as well i really like uh what what um macro nocta is doing um they're a company out of turkey and um they really care about their customers they're very innovative I, i think in my mind, they're the most innovative by far, and um, they're they're putting out some really good detectors. They just announced um, the Amphibio. They've got a detector um, that's going to be mul- simultaneously multiple frequencies that they're working on, and uh, yeah, they've got some really neat stuff. Really neat stuff. With that detector, though, if you broke down, is the service available to get it repaired, or do you have to send it back? Well, they. They don't have a service center here yet, but what they're doing, um, they, they want a video just to, and, and the big reason they want a video is if it's something that they haven't seen before, or they might, they might ask it back. They'll, they'll send you to get a, a thing to get it shipped back. But in most cases, they'll just send you what you need. They'll send a new one out. Uh-huh. Um, uh, you know, so they, they, they take good care of their customers, um, but they, they are working on getting that's a service important. center. I'm sorry, what's that's that? Important that they take care, that, that's important that they yes. take care of their customers. That's very important. So. Um, uh, yeah, I agree 100%, and uh, they are good. Uh, Bill's saying careful with that amphibio, Mike. What, what do you mean, Bill? What, what are you talking about? Have you heard? I don't know what he's asking or what he's saying, but yeah, I like what they're about. Um, Amphibio, got it. In the nose <laughs> I got a question for you too, Jim. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. I was reading what what Bill was saying. Go ahead. Gypsy, uh, when you you ran AT Pros, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. Have you ever ran your iron uh, discrimination up to 40 and shut your uh, audio off for iron and hunt that way when you infested in areas? I have, but I usually don't, you know, run my iron up that high, Um, my iron disc. um, I usually run mine, well, it depends if I just get tired of, you know, hearing, you know, all that iron or whatever, I might run it up to, you know, 30, 35. I, uh, why I asked you that, I did that the other day. I went back to a place that I've hunted probably 15 times. And uh-huh. there was an iron area. And I did that. It ran them all the way up to 40. Uh-huh. 
canceled yeah. out, hit my audio iron off, and uh, I pulled out a Mercury Dime. And I said, wow. Oh. Oh. Yeah, but, but that's the only coin I found that day there, but it did huh. work. That little trick did well, work. <laughs> that's a good trick to try. Um, I guess because I don't use the Pro as much, and I didn't use it as long as I have now, the AT Max. Um, but um, I've, so what I've, I've tried what, it. What I've heard, there's not much difference in the pro and the max other than the wireless is that true there's a lot of different small things that they've added well i shouldn't say small things uh that really said it there's there is an extra setting there's a true all metal mode um uh -huh. which is different from zero discrimination uh the true all metal mode and then there's also uh of course, yeah, the Z-Link wireless, um, which I love using those wireless headphones. And uh, yeah. now I've got the uh, wireless pinpointer, and I love that as well because um, I usually set mine on vibrate anyway. I don't like my pinpointer making a lot of noise for anybody else to hear. And so I love it that I can hear it in my headphones now. And, uh, but, um, there's also, well, there's threshold. little things like That's the huge. backlight. I love the yeah. threshold. Yeah. And the threshold. That's probably the biggest, I'd say the threshold and the all, the two all metal mode on there, you know, really set it apart, I would say, from the, um, AT Pro. And then the little extra bonuses like, um, you know, the Z-Link wireless and, the backlight and a volume control, and uh, I think there's a few other things that I'm not Gypsy, of I've, right now. But. I've seen a couple videos and heard a couple people say that the, they feel like uh, the Max, uh, excuse me, that the Max is deeper than the AT Pro. Would you agree with that, or what's your what's your thought? Yeah, I'd like it? to know that. Yeah. That's pretty much what has been, you know, said and from some, you know, a lot of testing. I would say, um, I think it's probably a little deeper. I, I would, I would, I've, I would venture to say, yeah, it's, it's a little deeper than the pro. And you um, have, you, you haven't said this, but a couple people in chat have said that the, the max, that the processor's faster. It's, I've heard people compare it to yes. like, to like the, the yes. dais even. It is almost instant. I mean, boom, you, you the wow. processor is, is no, that's what Pete, it. Pete, Pete Floyd drummer of dirt is in that max. And, uh, I think he went from pro to max life like what you did, but I ran my pro wide open at zero discrimination. I don't turn nothing down mostly of the time, 90% of the time when I, I new place. That's why I ran mine wide open because I want to see what I'm actually hearing, what's in the ground and what I'm dealing with. Yeah. So, but then and I dig by the number. Sometimes to do what you did uh, by running that disc up all the way and just cutting it out so you can only... You know, because sometimes you can get in there, and that's what I like about that small sniper coil is yeah. I try that on that homestead. I'm supposed to go back uh, this weekend, Saturday, and hunt it, and I can't wait to try that small sniper coil on it out there. Um, I might Let me know. Okay. Let me know how that comes uh, out, how that works for definitely. you. Uh, I'm going to be, I'll be videoing, and so I'll try to show a little more. If I've got somebody to film for me, uh, my okay. friend um, should be out there, and and then um, she's house, house sitting for the, the owner and said I could come out any time and uh, see if she can't video for me, and uh, that way I, I do some demos and stuff, and, and I may do, I'll do some live digs too that way. Y'all can, it's just so, that place is infested with rocks. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Tough digging, huh? Driving me crazy. Yes. Oh, man. 
there's river rocks everywhere, and I don't know how anything could get as deep as some of that stuff has. I don't know if they moved that ground around somehow or what, but ever you can't even get your shovel in without hitting three or four rocks. Yeah, we encounter limestone rocks here in West Virginia quite a bit. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, yeah they're, I'd say they're limestone here in, in the Round Rock, Austin area. And then, but out mm-hmm. there where I'm digging, it's uh, these all kinds of river rocks. It's weird. Okay. Well, that's the questions I've had for you, too. I just wanted to find that out. Yeah. You have any more questions you want to ask me, or? Um, let me think. There was something I was going to ask you a while ago when we were talking about a river, and earlier before you were talking about you did a little magnet fishing as well. And um, I was just wondering if you had tried your pro in, in any of the creeks and water around some of the old homesteads. Uh, uh, there was one creek, but it was so skinny, so shallow. I mean, my foot would, would touch both sides of the bank. I saw but I was trying to it was so rocky and I really yeah. couldn't get my coil down to the ground like I wanted to and I kinda of gave up. Uh I found no matter where you go you still find nails. So uh, I still found a couple of nails true? going up that creek bed uphill. So I didn't find it feasible at that area. But in my um, magnet fishing uh, cistern, the best things I've found so far is two spark plugs and uh and some pipes and a fishing hook. <laughs> so, uh, but I'm not giving up yet. Don't give up. So, you'll, you'll nope, I won't. Something. <laughs> just never. You just never know. Are you, you close to know. any any rivers or creeks? Uh, there is, but they're so deep and uh, and and muddy that if you stepped in them. Uh, you'd go to the water depth and another foot probably down in the mud, you know, wow. and uh, it'd be hard to get around a lot of fallen trees. Uh, uh, the, the rivers around here are big enough for a lot of boats and stuff to go up and down. So, uh, But I do have one we call it the Hughes River. It's a very shallow river, and, and uh, that's the one I wanted to target because I used to, after floods, go through it. I used to go river hunting, you know, just put on a pair of tennis shoes and shorts, and you go in there, and I've even pulled out a picnic table out of the trees. That's how high the floods would get. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah, so, you know, there's stuff in there to be found, and uh, I'm looking forward next spring to, to tackle the Hughes River in some places there. Uh, with my detector. Yeah, that so, sounds like a good that time. That sounds awesome. I love it. If I wasn't yeah. so, so scared of snakes, I'd love to detect some of the creeks <laughs> and rivers. I just, man, them snakes creep me out. And here, here it's even worse because, you know, you got every poisonous snake there is. Where in Ohio, we don't, you know, where I grew up, we don't have poisonous snakes. So I'd get in the water some. It still creeped me out, but... Here, you, you know, Gypsy had to fight off a, a, a water moxon, didn't you? Uh, not in the river, but oh man, um, I've I've had one chase me. Yeah, right. um, yeah, the moxons can, they can be aggressive. Mm-hmm. They can yeah, they be can. <laughs> scary. But they don't our mess our problem here is we have the copperheads, and we have a few timber rattlers, but not so many around my area. But the copperheads, yes, we got them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not so, a fan. And that's bad, in the, and that's bad hunting in the woods, of, and you can't see them copperheads in the woods. They're so camouflaged. Yeah, they are. Yeah, that's that's why your wife keeps a good good. She tracks you. I don't blame her. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Mine but, just uh, tracks me yeah, because that's... she just likes to know where I'm at at all times. <laughs> I <Yeah>. think every <laughs> I think every body's environment has danger. Of some sort. Oh, absolutely. That's true. Uh, you know, and if you take it for granted, you're going to get zapped. And uh, you don't never take nothing for granted when you're out there in the woods because in here, we have black bear, we have bobcats, we got coyotes and packs and stuff like that. You know, you just don't take it for granted. Hmm. My my biggest so danger in my environment is Steph, Steph and the kids. Mm-hmm. I just had to throw that out there. Real quick. 
<laughs> yeah. So, Phyllis, what have you encountered when you've been out metal detecting? I mean, I, I, uh, I, ha- I had name. I had one encounter, and he won, and I left. <laughs> but he was. It was between me and my truck. And I couldn't get to my truck, and it was a big old black Angus bull that didn't like me very well. And he was a snorting, and he was a pawing, and I says, oh, my, am I in trouble. (laughs) But I I circled wide on him, and I got to the front of my truck, and I said, well, get in front of the truck. I'm filling my stuff in that door. I'm getting out of here. (laughs) And that's what I did. But, yeah, he ran me out. That's the only one that's ran me out. That's funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, black Angus. Oh yeah, uh, I, I, he was bigger than I was, and I wasn't going to challenge him. I said, <laughs> "Okay, it, it's all yours, buddy. I'm leaving." <laughs> so I left. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I've Are seen you? some coyotes, but they, they ran from me. But uh, yeah, that's about the, nothing. The only thing that really concerned me was that big black Angus bull. <laughs> Yeah, those things, they, they, yeah. if it charged you. Yeah, well, you look 1,200 pounds, and that was big enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, I was I was bit by a dog one time out, in the, out field hunting. Had a dog come up on me and bit me. But, uh, oh, my. Long story I won't get into. I had one lick me. Yeah, I've had <laughs> several lick me. I've had a lot of them lick me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You ever been you ever been out metal detecting and you're kneeled down and all of a sudden you didn't realize it? There's a dog there and he licks you. Boy, that'd scare the heck out of you. Mm, <laughs> yeah, that's you happened. Yeah. Couple, it's happened to me a couple times. Yeah. Really friendly dog. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Remember one time I got on top of an ant pile I didn't see in the higher grass and uh, oh, yeah, I was doing man. the dance then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've had that happen yep. to me many times. And don't you hate it when you get a signal in an ant bag? Yeah. And yeah. You, you know, you know, Gypsy, I've had signals in the ground. And I've, and every time I've had a good signal, not every time, but some of the times I've had good signal, I dug, there's an ant, ants living that same signal of that, mm. that piece that was in the ground. Yeah, and I said, if I see too. ants, I, said, I keep digging. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you how bright I am. I moved here to Texas, never never knew anything about fire ants, and it took about, looking <laughs> at my feet, I'm going to say about 10 scars where I started. Oh. started. Yeah, I've got my feet, or, or both my feet are scarred up, because I'll take the dogs out in my sandals. You know, I ain't got time to put on <laughs> shoes and socks. And, and And then the funny part, the funny part of it is, Steph got into him a couple times, and she said, oh, you're a big sissy, and she'd call me names and stuff. And, uh, well, what had happened, she'd have socks and stuff on, and she'd barely get anything. Well, one one day, I think she had sandals on, and she got out of the truck under a tree at, at a um, restaurant of all places in town, and there was big, she stepped right down into a, a fire ant, pile of fire ants, Ooh, and, they, wow. and, and they lit her up, man, and they got her good finally. And she's like, "Oh, you're right. They do hurt. Yeah, they do. Oh, All that making fun of yeah. me. That's that's why you got those." Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I hate being boys down in Florida have to do all them rattlesnake, cotton mouth, you know, everything like that. They hunt out around there. Good gee, uh-huh. everything down in Florida wants to kill you. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> you know? does. Yeah, it does. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Not me. Back in the, the uh, late yeah. 80s, early 90s, uh, I used to go down there every summer and visit my grandfather, and he lived right on Lake Wales. And back then, the alligators were protected, and it was nothing to go out fishing and have seven, ten alligators just circling you. And, man, them things yeah. just – just look. My, my, my uh, dad and my grandfather got into some lily pads once and uh, got attacked by water moccasins. They were shooting them, and, and dad was – beating them off with the with the um a paddle and shooting like yeah my <laughs> grandpa was getting the boat started and out of there and uh yeah you just never knew down there yeah uh, everything wants to kill you yeah, <laughs> even the fire right. <laughs> yeah they do absolutely so, yeah well guys it's, uh, i'll tell I you don't... what 
it's sure been fun, and uh, I think we're at a good stopping point. What do you guys think? Sounds good Fine, to me. Yeah. Good deal. Yeah, and, I've uh, enjoyed some it. Of the, uh, some of the, the comments in the chat and uh, people were talking about how the ants, you know, love a lot of the electromagnetic activity, and that's so true. And then uh, Bill was saying how uh, he, he dug, you know, uh, Morgan dollars and <laughs> with the, how the ants like those Morgan dollars and, uh-huh. and <laughs> <laughs> saying that uh, he dug a 1949 dog tag uh, a couple of days ago, came out of a small ant bed. But it is, I wonder if they're attracted to the metal somehow. Yeah. I don't know. Just not, I, I think it's a it's a heat-related thing. I really do. That oh, metal warms up. Could be. Yeah, yeah that's could a, be. That's a good Just my personal opinion, but... So, Bob, yeah. Bob, Bob D said we need to stay on another hour. <laughs> he said, hour. he said, boring lives <laughs> matter. And, uh, uh, Bill said we need to have you back on. I agree. We'll get you back on another time yeah. for sure. And, uh, it's sure okay. been fun. I enjoy that. Good. We, we, it's we'd enjoy great, having Bill. you. Absolutely. Okay. It's been a pleasure on this then. Yeah. I was same here, Thank Philip. So Thank much. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. And, Gypsy, yeah. let me know how it turns out for you, okay? Will do, definitely. Thanks again. Okay. We'll be in contact. All right, hon. All right. Okay. okay. Talk to you soon. Good night. Good night, y'all. All right. Good night. All right, everybody. We've wrapped up another one. Thank you for joining us, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow night. Good night, all. The All Metal Mode Podcast is sponsored by Digger's Den. If you are looking for a metal detector, get in touch with Mike or Brian. Together, they have years of experience with many different brands and models. They also truly enjoy what they do. You can contact them through Facebook at Digger's Den, visit the website at ddetectors.com, or give Mike a call. He makes it sound like it's so hard raising our boy, but trust me, he has time. 937 414 Four five seven eight.